okay uh, thanks all of you and good afternoon uh, this is our day 7 uh, webinar basically topics advanced routing protocol eigrp ospf and bgp uh, day today day 1 and also tomorrow and then our last lecture also related to this one wcn10 network troubleshooting with this eigrp and ospf and bgp also covered this uh, uh, day uh, webinar 10 so uh, today our uh, instructor nozrul islam uh, manager ip and core operation face cloud and in this networking area he has more than 10 year experience uh, he was related to uh, bd ran uh, UGC. Uh, so I would like to request uh, Nozul Islam to conduct uh, the today uh, webinar. Okay, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, uh, I am not going to introduce myself anymore because uh, sir already told about me. So I just get look. He jump into our class. So today's uh, class is. Or uh, it's related to the EIJRP as already uh, Sir said. So I don't know that uh, how many things I can cover today because uh, the time is very short. So I will try my best as maximum I can uh, what I can cover. So let let's get a start. So uh, what uh, actually I will cover today's lesson. Uh, to, so the basic things uh, that need to hain, you know, will uh, uh, manage the network using the EIGRB protocol, right? So uh, what things we will cover uh, is uh, related to the EIGRB adjacency, base path selection, general operation, and uh, load balancing, right? So before starting our EIGRB class, I would uh, like to share uh, or I just uh, echoing some things that uh, as uh, all you guys already know the what the thing is uh, it's basic like uh, what is IP routing how actually uh, packet are traversing from one host to another host via uh, router so it's basic things uh, if we don't know how actually uh, things are happening then uh, it's uh, would be difficult for us to understand how EJRP work and how others uh, our routing protocol are work so uh, let's say uh, uh, this is uh, this is our one router and this is our two router uh, that's are uh, directly connected under the r1 i just naming it to r1 and this is r2 and there is a host behind R1 and there is another host behind R2. Uh, we can name it uh, like H1 and uh, it's H2. And if we set the IP address on the host like 192.168.1.1 and also the IP address on host 2 is 192.168.2.1. And there is uh, another IP on same subnet on the router side, uh, it would be like 254. Whatever it is, what uh, we can put in our router, that will be actually the IP or the gateway of host one. And here is also same things, dot 254 on same network. And another thing like point to, for the point to point IP, that is 10 dot 0.0.1 and here is 10.0.0.2. So, what actually IP routing? As we already uh, all know, the actual forwarding of IP packet is called IP routing, right? So, it's uh, the simple things. But uh, the thing is, when uh, the packet is coming into the router, like R1 or R2 it's nothing to reach uh, uh, nothing to do with the learning or uh, listening about the routing he just forwarding the packet he don't know how actually the uh, route is coming into r1 or r2 his uh, job is to forward the packet from 
one router to another router. And thing is, how actually we'll forward this traffic from R1 to R2? So it's basically depend on the routing. So it can be static, it can be dynamic, right? So uh, if we just uh, equing uh, like uh, same, uh, I wanna send traffic from 192.168.1.12 to 192.168.2.1. How actually I will send the traffic from uh, host one to host two. So to forwarding the uh, packet from host one to host two, what actually uh, a host will do in uh, his uh, inside, he will check first whether the uh, destination network that is on uh, two dot one is it on the same subnet or it's a different uh, different subnet. So when he see uh, his IP address that is one ninety two one six four one ninety two one six eight one dot one and the destination is two dot one. It's a fully on different subnet, right? Because uh, it's a class C and the default CADR is slash twenty four. So when he seeing uh, the destination network is different network what he will do he will actually forward his traffic to the his gateway right it's basic things when he uh he will see he uh, it's a different network he will uh, forward this traffic to the gateway so before uh, sending uh, the packet into the uh, router what actually he will do he will use the uh, he will build the packet like uh, IP packet where he will include the source IP of 192.168.1.1 and the destination IP is 192.168.2.1. Okay. When he will uh, build the IP packet, then he will uh, check the ARP. How actually he will uh, go into the Two five four. That means he will make the Ethernet packet for this. So, oh, when he will make the Ethernet frame, same things happen. He will uh, use the source MAC address and the destination MAC address. Let's say uh, uh, our host MAC address is AA, and uh, for host two is BB, and the MAC address of R one that is connected to host one that is uh, like C C or D D E E and F A. Just for better understanding, how actually tra uh, traffic is traversing uh, from one to another, right? Then he will build the uh, Ethernet frame with the source IP and destination uh, source MAC and destination MAC. Then what will be the source MAC? Source MAC will be. Oops. Source MAC will be the host A MAC address, right? That, that is AA. Then what will be the destination MAC? Because it's the same subnet and he will check uh, the uh, MAC address of 254, right? Then if he will uh, find, uh, he, uh, if he don't find this MAC address on his MAC table and uh, we know uh, the host will broadcast right so i'm not going on uh, that part so he will uh, actually build the ethernet frame with the destination mac at this is cc right so what we'll uh, find here we'll find two things one is uh, ip packet that is with the source and destination and also we'll getting ethernet frame with the source and destination mac then the packet will uh, forward into the r1 when r1 will get this packet what he will um, when r1 will uh, get the frame from host one what he will check 
he's uh, check uh, will check the uh, ethernet frame whether uh, the all the frame is correct or not i am not going that part here like so when he will get he will check uh, uh, he will just uh, uh, decapsulate the frame like he will check whether the uh, destination mac is related to his or not if we find then he will uh, check the ip packet also then he will see the destination ip is 192.168.2.1 if he find the ip address is 2.1 then what router one i mean r1 will do r1 will uh, check his routing table whether this uh, network is belongs to his routing table or not if you find the ip address that uh, i mean the network of 192.168.2.0 is on his uh, routing table then he will find how actually traffic will forward right like uh, he will find the if uh, the interface is first 800 and if it is first at one then he will find he the interface where actually traffic will be forwarded right after that he again build up the ethernet frame with the source i source mac address with the dd and the destination mac address with the double e and the ip packet will be the same like source address is 182.168.1 and destination IP address is 182.168.2.1. When the packet coming into the R2, the same thing will happen. First, R2 will check the all the frames. If all the frame is okay, then he will decapsulate the frame and check whether the destination MAC is related to his Ethernet or his MAC table. If it belongs to his Ethernet or MAC table, then he will check the IP packet. When he see the destination IP address is 2.1, again he will check his routing table. And if he find the IP address is 2.1 is connected interface on his uh, is connected to the H2, then he will forward this traffic to the host 2. So actually, this is the basic things as already we already know that, right? So actually, the packet is if we just remove all the things. So first packet will come into the router one, then router one will forward it to the R two, then R two will forward it to the Post two. The, this is the best thing things in routing. How actually routing is doing uh, his job. So the question is how R1 is forwarding, how actually R1 is getting the route from R2. Right? Because it's not the connected route with the R1 and R2. Right? Uh, sorry, and R1, right? The network that is 192.168.2.0 is actually connected to the r2 but it's not connected to the r1 then how actually r1 learn about the 2.0 network so that's actually the uh, uh things routing happen so we can do actually we can manually assign the static out for this that means we can manually can assign a static route on r1 we can tell the, uh, if anyone need to go on then we have to forward this packet into the next of address that is 10.0.0.2 and a static route we can do do that way. but same thing we can learn by a dynamic routing protocol right how many uh, dynamic routing protocol have in current words right so actually the all the routing protocol divided into two parts we already know that one is igp another one is bgp 
not EGP, actually the EGP. So IGP means interior gateway routing protocol. That's actually divided into another three section or three part like distance vector routing protocol. Distance vector routing protocol, link state routing protocol, and the advanced distance vector routing protocol. And EGP actually one routing protocol under the EGP that is the EGP. That is the best thing. Things you will know that. So let's jump into our today's class that is related to the EIGRP. So how actually uh, what is uh, is the actually EIGRP? We already know that. EJB stands for enhanced distance vector routing protocol, right? So it's a commonly where actually it is used. It's commonly used in the enterprise network, and uh, as we know, are like other distance vector routing protocol like we. So it uses the same things like uh, split horizon route poisoning and the reverse poisoning to avoid the loop right why it's called the advanced distance vector routing protocol it uses um, i mean the some part from the link state and some part from the distance vector routing protocol it's a uh, that's why it's called the hybrid routing protocol it's initial thing primarily it was built for the cisco after uh, i think uh, it's that in 2016 it uh, uh, open for all. If we want to check uh, RFC 7868, we can find that over there. So the the basic uh, two things just uh, we to know how in, in uh, we see any routing that coming through the EAGRP. We found the AD value. I mean the administrative distance of it is 90. And when uh, the external EAGRP, that means uh, that is from other route that we'll find with the AD value is 170. So it's a basic intro of EAJRP. What is autonomous system number? It's nothing uh, but a number. What actually uh, what a system do it's actually represent uh, the common routing domain nothing is like if you see a slide there is a uh, two autonomous system number one is a is 100 another one is 200 we can actually run multiple EAG uh, process in same router for differentiate the context, we can use the autonomous system number. So why actually it's needed? It's needed because routers within the same domain use the same uh, metric calculation formula and exchange routes within the members. Like when we configure the AJRP in between R1, R2, R3, R4, and also R5 and R6, it actually, uh, when it configured with AS number 100, the update packets will just forwarding into R1 to R2, R1 to R3, and R1 to R4. Cause it's a, but it will not forward this packet R5 and R6, cause it's independent automatic system number so just uh, for uh, time for the time being we just need to uh, uh, remember that the autonomous is, is uh, autonomous system is a number where we can represent as a common routing domain nothing else
if we uh, see into the EAGR tables, we can find there are uh, uh, three different tables on EAGR. One is EAGRP uh, neighbor table that is here. Another, sorry. One is EAGRP neighbor table. Another one is EAGRP topology table and uh, EAGRP routing table. What actually a uh, neighbor table is? It's actually when we are, uh, let's say we are two router, R1 and R2, R1 and R2. When we'll build up neighborship with R1, R2, there will be adjacency. Like then this uh, in R1 neighbor table, we'll find R2 as his neighbors. And also what you'll find, he will find the interface where he is connected to the R2 and also the next of router address. So in EAJP neighbor table, it belongs three things. List of all directly connected neighbors in his neighbor table, where actually the EAJP is enabled, and the next of router address and also the how actually he can go over there. Right. I mean the interface of uh, uh, interface of the R1 that is connected to the others router. When uh, R1, R2 build up the neighborship, uh, the R2 will exchange his uh, routing table with the R1, R1 will uh, exchange his routing table to R2. Then uh, when they will exchange a uh, same, when R1 exchanges his routing table with the R1, R1 will save all the routes in his topology table that means all the list at routes that is coming from the others router i mean the neighbors that will ex actually save into the topology table where actually will find the destination address and the metric what is the metric i will discuss in coming uh, slides after that when we find all the routes towards the destination like uh, this is the destination from R1 to destination, if you have multiple path to go into the destination, that will be on the topology table, right? But only one, uh, only the base path that, uh, that, is, uh, we, um, that is used for reaching the destination network will be on the routing table. That means base routes from the EAJRP tables will be copied to the routing table. So, so this is uh, the three tables. Uh, so we'll learn more about the neighbor table, topology table, and routing table later. Sorry, just for uh, the sorry, time. Sorry, um, Nazrul, I interrupt you. Uh, someone yes. asked you that uh, you have to go for presentation mode uh, in uh, Microsoft Office. OK. Actually, uh, I use I am not using the presentation because I have to uh, write something on that presentation. That's why I'm using. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Slide. You may proceed. Okay. So, is there anything else? I mean, uh, or do you have any other question or related to this? Uh, no, yes. no, no question. Still now, okay. I have already seen this question, but I know you are using some tools. That's why I don't uh, interrupt you. Okay. Okay. I think you okay. can proceed the, now. Okay. Sure. So, uh, so it's the basic of the uh, three uh, EJRP tables. Now we just need to know how actually EJRP select the best path to uh, reach the destination. As we already, as I said, uh, that uh, EJRP uses uh, the topology table to uh, topology table and routing table, right? But what is the procedure to reach um, uh, uh, reach the destination? So, so mainly EJRP will start sending hello packets to other router just like OSPA does. That means when uh, R1 here, if you see on the first picture, like uh, R1 and R2, when sending the hello packet, with each other, right? Then 
the neighborship will be established when neighborship will be established then ehp neighbors will exchange the routing information with each other as i already said that and the base route copied into the routing table right but how actually best path selected that's our main target so for selecting the base path ehp uses lots of metric mainly bandwidth delay load reliability right okay let me write down here first one is bandwidth then delay then load then a relay so oh, uh, except this for one uh EJP also used mto jitter and other things for calculating the path selection right so let's move on to our next slide our uh, next uh, image that is uh, actually we want to reach the destination here behind the r3 from r1 that's our goal i actually EHRP calculate the base path to reaching the destination. In our real, uh, I mean, real world EHRP, if you see on the routing table or topology table, the number uh, number is a little bit higher. So, for better understanding, I use uh, uh, some uh, uh, small number like that is the metric or cost for reaching say r1 for r1 to r2 is so i will use uh, i am using the 5 for r2 to r3 i am using the 10 and r3 to destination i am using the cost is 5 so oh what actually first do find step uh, neighborship is established then what r3 will do r3 will advertise to r2 how actually r2 or the destination cost how actually r uh, r2 can go over the um, uh, i mean r2 can go to the destination so it's saying how cost to r3 to reach the destination what then what will be the cost to reaching the destination that is the five that means i oh, what we are seeing here right r3 to destination the cost is five okay just remove this all these things so that is the cost when r3 advertising the cost into the r2 that means he's saying i have a destination and to reaching this destination the cost is five then what r2 will do r2 will save this information into his topology table the advertise distance for the destination is five as we are seeing in the topology table then what actually i uh, will find later on see the cost is five is just about for to reach the destination from r3 but there is another thing to re the, uh, reach the r3 that is there is a link cost in between r2 and r3 for that that is 10 then what actually r2 will save his topology table he will save the distance in between r2 to r3 is 10 also he is include the five cost to reach the destination that means the total cost to reach the destination that is called the feasible distance
so what is feasible distance feasible distance means i i i am um, uh, the total distance to the, uh, reach the destination so rc is just advertising the cost is 5 but i have another distance to reach uh, reach the r3 so then what will be the cost 10 plus 5 is equal to 15 so 15 will be the feasible distance and the advertised distance that is advertising the r3 to r2 that is 5 make sense okay now jump into our next slide Now R3 is exchanging his routing information to R1. Then when exchanging the information into R1, what R1 will find? R1 will find to reach, uh, reach the destination, that advertised distance is 10 plus five is equal to 15, right? So he'll save the 15 as advertised distance in his topology table now there is another cost in between r1 and r2 then he will find the total distance to reach the destination that is 15 plus 5 is equal to 20 as feasible distance so what is feasible distance now feasible distance is nothing it's just about uh, the total distance to reach any destination. If we see on R1 to reach the destination, what will be the feasible distance? That is 20. And what is the advertised distance? Advertised distance, what neighbor is saying to reaching the destination? The distance that is saying to reach the destination. In here, R2 is saying to reach the destination i have a cost that is 15 then r2 including his cost to with this then the total distance is 20. so in here we are uh, getting two terms one is advertised distance another one is feasible distance make sense so let's move on So uh, if you see there is another uh, table like uh, R1, R2 and R3. Sorry. Say uh, this is R1. And from R1, if you wanna, or, uh, sorry, not this R1. Uh, this is R1, R2 and R3. So, if we check what will be the advertised distance for R1 and what will be the uh, advertised distance for R2. If we wanna like build a EAJP topology table or the routing table, then what will be the advertised distance into R1. So, for des uh, reaching the destination, what is the cost in R1? The advertised distance is 10, right? If you want, uh, just check by your own, then you can understand how actually the path is calculated. So what will be the advertised distance in R1 to reach the destination? It's 10. And what with the physical distance? There is nothing cost in between the destination. So we just write down this, it's 10. Oh, sorry, not that one. We just write down the to raise uh, the advertised distance for the say this is r one two three four we are calculating at r4 so r1 is advertising his distance is 10 right and r2 advertising his distance is 5 and r3 is advertising his distance as 9. so what will be the feasible distance for first link that is go by R1, so the total distance for reaching the destination, the feasible distance will be the 15, and 
the feasible distance by r2 will be 10 and there is a feasible distance of 109 now as we know the base feasible distance i mean the lowest feasible di distance is called the successor that means that is the best route to reach the destination if we see the feasible distance for which one is the best it's by r2 it's called the successor so successor means it's uh, the base route to reach the destination so in ehb as we know uh, like it has another path that's called the feasible successor so what is feasible successor first let me write down the term that is it's just for the backup path if uh, like uh, if the first path that is via r2 is down then what will happen then immediately r4 install the physical successor route into his routing table then there is no there will be no interruption for passing the traffic so that's why ehp used one is successor another one is physical successor that is the backup path for reaching the destination but in his topology table uh, more than uh, feasible or non feasible uh, path can be there right but he will just select the two things one is successor another one is feasible successor so what is the condition to select the feasible successor there is a condition for selecting the feasible successor the feasible condition is advertised distance of feasible successor must be less than the feasible distance of successor what it mean actually what is our feasible distance that is 10 then the advertised distance of feasible successor must be less or than the feasible distance so what is the lesser the advertised distance is less than our uh, successor that is 9 then 9 will be our feasible successor make sense so we are getting uh, two things here one is successor another one is feasible successor earlier slide we know uh, about the advertised distance and the feasible distance so in this way actually EJRP calculate his base path uh, i'm just using here a numerical number to understand how actually can happen but in real life you will find the number is uh, higher than that so we see how actually uh, the number is calculating in a router side so in ejp terminology you will find some things like successor route successor feasible distance reported distance feasible condition and the feasible successor as we already know the what is the successor that is this is the best path to reach the destination right and we also know about the feasible distance that is the total distance to reach the destination and the reported distance is another name is advertised distance so what, uh, what is the distance our neighbor is telling the router to reach the destination that is the reported distance and sorry Nuzbul, hello yes uh, just yes. one question uh, one participant asked uh, to uh, explain a uh, uh, repeat uh, about the difference between successor and feasible successor okay okay got it 
So okay. the difference in between the successor and physical successor is just like uh, one is the base path, another one is the backup path. Okay. If we write down here, like base path and the backup path. So in routing table, we will find just the uh, sorry, just so in our uh, so in routing table, what we will find in uh, uh, what actually is uh, from the topology table? Sorry for interrupting, uh, Mr. Nozrul Sahib. Uh, yes. There is a question arise. Uh, what is the okay. difference between successor and feasible successor? You have to repeat this topic again. Okay. I, I think I, uh, Faisal, I already, uh, I think you are not in the line. I already told. Uh, okay. No, sir, uh, I got the question. So what is the successor and the, what is the feasible successor? Successor, I just say that is the base path or base route. That means uh, if we see uh, there is, uh, okay, just let me draw a topology, then that will be better to understand. See, this is uh, the destination in right side in behind the say r5 this is r1 r2 r3 and r4 so in uh ejp topology table what we will get we will get the three different different path to reach the destination right we will get all the path then what will be our best path and what will be installed into the EJP routing table, not EJP routing table and uh, routing table of the router. So the best path that is the lowest path to reach the destination is called the successor. That is called the successor. As seen here, the best path to the destination is called the successor. That is the first part. Another thing EJRP uh, is, does that is he ensure another path as a backup. If uh, something or uh, something goes wrong with the successor, I mean the path with the successor is go got down, then the backup path will come into the picture. That means the backup path will be in in routing table. In EJRP side, this backup path is called the feasible successor. I mean, sorry. So I think uh, now you can understand what actually uh, what is the successor and what is the feasible successor. So now coming into our slide, if you see what is successor, I already say the best path and the physical successor is the backup path. And what is the reported distance? Is the advertised distance that is neighbor is telling us how far we can reach the destination, what will be the cost. And the feasible distance is the total distance that is to reach the destination. And the feasible condition is, as we said, the advertised distance of the feasible successor must be lesser than the feasible distance of the successor. That means the feasible distance of the successor should be greater than the feasible uh, advertised distance of the feasible successor, as um, we seen on earlier side. So that is the condition for getting the feasible successor. That's the condition. As already mentioned here, advertised distance of the physical successor must be lesser than the physical distance of the successor. And who are, what is the successor load? I'll already told the route with the lowest path metric to reach the destination is the successor route. The successor is the 
name path. So this terminal all uh, was used in EAJRP, I think. In all of you now, let's and what is the successor, feasible successor, advertised distance, and other things. And uh, if we uh, see on the EAJRP, there are uh, lots of packet we can see in the uh, routing of um, uh, in the EAJRP like hello packets, update packets, query packet, reply packets, and acknowledgement packet. So what actually does this? Like, as I mentioned earlier, right? When you enable the EAJRP on R1, R1 will start at the sending hello packet to his neighbors, like R2. So when is sending packet first time uh, when enabling the uh, EAJRP on enable uh, EAJRP on this interface, he's sending first packet. Then it's called the hello packet. So hello packet actually used for neighbor discovery and also for test whether uh, the neighbor is reachable or unreachable. As soon as uh, the you send the hello packet and receive them from the EJRP router, will try to form the neighbor adjacency. So for that, R2 also has to be send the hello packet. So hello hello packet actually used for neighbor adjacency. And what is the update packet? When uh, R1 is sending hello packet to R2, he is sending his routing table to R1, right? And really well away, I am not go uh, going that part. So what actually he will carry his uh, update? He will carry all his routing table except those routes that he is learned from R1 via this interface. So it's uh, sending the all the uh, reply packet or update packet. That means all the routing information is sending via the update packet. So we get to know about the two uh, packets. One is hello, another one is update. And what is query packet? Query uh, uh, packets are used when you when your EAJRP has lost information of some route like say ESRP has 192.168 like 10.0 slash 24 suddenly he's lost his route this route then he's sending queries all his neighbors do you have any route to reach the destination 192.168 10.0 slash 24 so that means he's telling his neighbor to let him know what, uh, if they have the route to reach the extension that is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. So uh, the packet to search certain network or routes on his neighbor is called actually the query packet. He's just sending query to his neighbors. When uh, any neighbor get uh, the query packet, he's respond against query packet. That is actually the reply packet. Against then he also send another packet that he got the uh, routing information and he's letting his neighbors that I am getting, uh, I got your information or I got the route from here with the acknowledgement packet. So uh, this is the uh, packet types what actually we seen in the EAJRP. So uh, we can uh, wait for five minutes to complete the other. Okay.
so if you have any question you can note down in a uh, question answer box okay uh, okay i will uh, describe what is the best distance solution Okay, so the question was what is, uh, how actually uh, we understand the uh, base path, right? As I already said, in EHRP topology table, uh, we find all the cost to reach the destination, including the advertised distance others, as I explained in earlier slide. If we go back into our, like, not last slide here. So, see, in R1, uh, R2, R2, uh, the destination behind R3, this is the destination, right? So when uh, we need to go from R1 to R3, I mean the destination, so what will be the cost to reaching this? So we are getting uh, this distance is 20, right? This is the feasible distance we are, are telling, right? So like from R1, uh, from R1 to R3, uh, if there is uh, another two link, like uh, one day, uh, or distance is 25 another distance uh, sorry another uh, physical distance for uh, reaching the r3 is 25 another uh, physical distance to reaching the r3 is 30 then what cost is the lowest cost the lowest cost i mean lowest physical distance will be the base path or base route make sense i think you can now understand what uh, how actually uh, now this path calculating and other things so in ehp table if we uh, see the routing uh, neighbor table on the ehp there is something on uh, some flags on our there so we have to understand what actually that means like if we uh, uh, run the show command like show ip ehp neighbors then what we will found here we'll uh, we'll find there is one thing age another thing on the address interface hold down time srtt rto PO, count sequence number what actually are uh, the mean what is the meaning of this flags so okay. so flag is nothing it's just uh, in uh, order number when you when first neighborship will uh, neighbor uh, establishing with the other neighbor the first one will be the zero and the second will be the one that means your first neighbor will be have a value of zero the second neighbor a value of one and it will be on uh, so on like zero one two three in this way and what is the whole second? This is the hold down timer per EHRP neighbor. So once the timer expires, EHRP drop the neighbor adjacency. 
the default hold down timer in EJRP, as you know, that is in 15 seconds. When he uh, found the hello packet from the neighbor, then it's resetting again. That means, like, and, uh, I mean, this is R1 and this is R2. In every uh, five second, EJRP sends hello packet one uh, sending to each other when the uh, hold down timer is 15 seconds and it will count down like 15 14 13 in this way when he found another hello packet from his neighbors then he's resetting his hello, uh, hold down timers again the up time is how long the neighbor has been up that means if you see here, that is the uh, that is in six minutes, six seconds. SRTT. What is SRTT? SRTT means a smooth round trip time. It's a, a number of milliseconds as you see in uh, below. It takes the time to uh, in millisecond to send EHRP packets to the neighbor like uh, when he's sending one packet to his neighbor and they were receive and send him an acknowledgement so this time is called the srtd r1 is sending one EHRP packet and r2 is sending against the acknowledge of I, EJB packets in total time is called the SRTT. SRTT. And what is RTO? RTO means retransmission or timeout. That is the EJRP OIT before retransmitting a packet from the retransmitted in queue. That means when uh, the neighbor says, uh, uh, neighborship uh, just established he oiled uh, in millis uh, i mean uh, it's in millisecond how actually he'll uh, send again uh, i mean he will uh, again he transmitting uh, the EHB packet if there is something goes wrong in here you see the q cnt that means the q count the q count uh, is uh, the number of the EHB packet it can be update packet, it can be query packet, it can be on reply packet. In generally, uh, we don't see any number on the uh, this uh, in here, like uh, we always we seeing the zero here. That means uh, we are in safe side. If we see there is some number on Q count, then it might be indication some congestion in our network that means that the packet i mean the update packet with the packet, reply packet is getting time to send his neighbors so in generally uh, we are uh, we always seen the q count number is zero and last number is the sequence number it shows the number how when the last update query or reply packet that is received from his neighbor so all uh, this flag we are uh, seeing normally in our ehp neighbor table okay now coming into our uh, ehp topology table so what actually uh, topo topology table is here. We also seen some flags here, like uh, passive, active, update, and query, reply, reply status, SI status. So before going uh, uh, to that part, what actually we are uh, getting here, first of all, in if you see in the Swipe EJP uh, topology, I have already read here, right? 
that is the autonomous system number as means the autonomous system number what is the auto, uh, EAJ autonomous number here that is one and what is the id this id is actually the router id so we'll discuss this later just keep in mind in eajp topology table we will find one is as number another one is router id and also other routing information and now coming into our course or flags number what actually it's mean so here we uh, see in the passive and also if you see uh, uh, behind the route 2.2.0 slash 24 there is a p flags here so what does it mean so it's actually the um uh, meaning uh, that we are in good position like the routing is good that means when we are uh, getting routes from the topology table into our uh, uh, routing table or when we are getting all the routes in our uh, from our neighbor the all the routes in position in p that means there is no changes in the topology table when it will that is the p tag and active when you will uh, see the active i mean the a behind the route there is something not good in your topology table that means the route or that is lost and in active position that means he is trying to reach uh, the destination in and searching the other way like he is sending the query packet to the other as is seen in earlier slide so what is active active means the route is not in a good position in topology table is uh, the actually the topology table lost the uh, this network and he is trying to find the another way to reach this network by sending the query to his neighbors when he is sending his query packets against he will also found some reply against his query the status this call is reply status that means neighbor is sending query against his query packet when you uh, see SIA behind the any route that means the route is in bad position I mean the is stuck in active it means he is sending query all of his neighbors smart but not getting any reply from his neighbors that is in SIA stuck in active so all these things we need to know how you will troubleshoot uh, uh, troubleshooting EAJRP topology I mean EAJRP router then we have to know what's the condition of the route in the topology table if is it in uh, the P tag with the or A or the update query what's the condition of the route in the topology table so this is actually the basic things uh, if you see on the EAJRP routing table or the topology table. But how actually adjacency will make with the two router or any EAJRP enabled? Let's see that's part. How load is? Uh, no, no, no. Yes, sir. I can hear. Uh, one one question from Shahjul Islam. How load is balanced by EIGR? So uh, load balance will uh, I will cover that part in uh, later slide. Okay, later section. Okay, I think you will discuss that time. As, okay. Actually, we are participant. Please write your question. Otherwise, uh, if you unmute you, it's uh, uh, time consuming. So if you write your question, I will pass your question to uh, an instructor. Okay, thank you, sir. 
So how uh, actually uh, EAJT neighbor or adjacency will happen? Let's come into that part. So as I already said, and we already know about uh, the hello packet, acknowledge packet, update packet, all the things, right? So when R1 uh, is sending hello packet to R2, R2 just reply with the update or table R1. That means he's uh, just know about the hello packet. But the neighbor or she will not establish it because to establishing the neighborship in between R1 and R2, there, uh, there is two hello packet need to exchange in between them. That means R2 also, R1 also need the hello packet from R2. So in here, if you see in first step, the R1 is sending the hello packet to R2. In second uh, picture, if you see R1 is sending hello packet and also R2 sending the up, update packet. What update packet it carries? It actually carries all the routing information. Except the route that he is get uh, learned from fast Ethernet zero by zero interface. After that, when he's getting the update packet from R2, he's not making the adjacency with the R2 cause R2 not yet send his hello packet to R1. He's just sending acknowledgement to the R2, I am got your update package. And also is sending his update packet, I mean the routing information to R2, and also is sending again is the update packet. They are not actually establishing the neighbor agency yet. For neighbor agency, what is the condition and how actually neighbor agency will happen in between R1 and R2. For neighbor adjacency, as we say, uh, there's a need to send hello packet in between R1 and R2. In this hello packet, what we found here, we have to match the AS number, like if we configure the R1 100 AS number and R2 is the 200 AS number, then neighbor urgency will not happen because the condition to establish the neighbor is adjacency, we to same the AS number. That means if R1 is configured with the AS number R1 uh, 100 and R2 side, the AS number should be the same, that is 100. Also, when we will configure EAJLP on both R1 and R2, the interface IP that is connected to R1 and R2 should need to be on same subnet. Like in here, if you see 192.168.12 is a subnet and the host number one in here two is a, that means two of them are in same subnet. Then the second condition is okay. Another thing that is optional, authentication must need to match with the R1 and R2. That means if you use like authentication, if we use the password like one, two, three in R1, if here it, it is three, four, five, then password will not match, right? Then the neighborship will not establish. So to establishing the neighbor, then authentication, should need to be same. Another th a thing for establishing the neighbor, we have to match the K values. What is the K values? In EAJRP, we find five K values. K1, K2, K3, K4. So what is the K value? It's uh, just a, Metric of EJRP bandwidth. First one is bandwidth. Second one is delay. 
uh, sorry, the second one is load. Third one is delay. Fourth one is delayability. So uh, all of, of these are in K values. So by default, K1 and K3 is on. That means K1 is one, K2, K3 is one. Rest of the K values is zero. So if by default, what will be the K value in R1? K1 is zero, oh sorry, K1 is one, K2 is zero, K3 is 1, K4 is 0, K5 is 0. So we found in K values K1 and K3 is on. That means bandwidth and delay. Then if R2, K value is K1 is 1, K2 is 1, K3 is 1, K4 is 0, K5 is 0. Then the neighbor ship will not get this. That means it no, will not establish because the K value is different in two routers. Although the S number is same, subnet is same, authentication is match. But K value is different, so condition are matching with with the two routers. That means if we uh, establish the neighborship, then K value also mess, messed with in between two uh, neighbors. So if we um, don't change anything, by default, all the K value in EJP router are same. So what we'll found uh, here that K1 is one and K3 is one. And same here in R2, K1 is 1 and K3 is 1. So the neighborship will be. So if all the condition is, then the neighborship will be established between R1 and R2. Now, see how actually. What happened when we enable the EAGLP on the uh, any router? Like, what is the command for enabling the EAGLP router? EIGRP is number like hundred. Say when we enable the is uh, enable the EAGLP hundred and mention the network like. 192.168.12.1 quad zero. Then we just enabling the EJRP on this interface. Then what actually will happen when we are enabling the EJRP? Then this interface will be on the multicast group. That is two to four dot zero dot zero dot ten and also when we enable the EJRP on R2 first Ethernet zero y interface it will be on the same multicast group that is two to four dot zero dot zero dot ten and how actually uh, the hello packet will be look like when we'll send the hello packet to R1 we actually do the source address of the packet is like 192.168.12.1 and the multicast, uh, I mean the destination address is the multicast address that is 224.0.0.10 for R1 side. And R2 side, what will be the uh, hello packet look like? The source. IP is the unicast address that is 192.168.12.2 and the destination IP will be the 224.0.0.10. 
when all are getting uh, the hello packets and matching all the things then the neighborship will be adjusting so in this way the ejrp routers are build his neighborship so if we go to our lab what we will find here let's see so as of now is there any question do you have any question right now Uh, sorry, so far no question, but uh, okay. two up raise uh, their hand. So, Makaji uh, Marufa, do you hear me? Do you have any question? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, what about your question? You can uh, ask. Sir, okay, thank you very much. Sir, can you please uh, go back to slide nine? Yes. Uh, okay, sir. Here we have calculated the ad advertised distance and feasible distance, but uh, we have calculated from two different sides. So you have put our four router in the left hand uh, left. If you see the on the I, I I got your question. I, if I'm not wrong, so if you see the destination right in the right side, so actually we are trying to go the destination from here. And calculating the based on this router. So for, from from R one we are going to R four and then we are going to the destination. Right. Uh, from here first path that is we are going to R one, then here, then R uh, this one R two and here, then this one and this one. So there is a three path, right? So. Okay. So who will actually the advertising uh, the uh, distance for the destination R1, R2, and R3. Here you will find R1, R2, and R3. Yes, sir. You got the point? Got yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Waidullah Omar, do you hear me? Do you have any question? Since you have raised your hand, I already allow you to talk. Do you have any question? Wahidullah Omar? Okay. okay, I think you can uh, proceed now. Okay, so uh, if you just configure to uh, routers, let's see what actually packet is look like on the router side. Then we can better understand how, how actually packet is uh, going from one router to another router. So. For demonstrating purpose, I just use two router R1 and R2, and it's connected by a serial S1, S2. I not I not configure anything on R1 and R2. Let's open first R1 and R2. So just to make sure how to leave the IP. Just right. Let's say the IP of this interface would be 192.168 and 12.1, same things. And here will be 192.168, 12.2. Nothing much more than that. And here we'll use another network that is 10.2. 2.0.0/24. So here will interface IP will be one and not one. We'll use all the interface as the router number and here also same 10.1.0.0/24 and the IP will be dot one. So I think the project is clear. Now let's move on to our lab.
I think I mean just just for let's say I am stopping out the screen and coming back again. Can you see now, sir? Yes, we can see now. Okay. So uh, let's configure our, our first router, that is R1. To configure the router, we have to go into the configuration mode. Uh, it's R1. So I'm going to configure the serial interface S1 by 0, SC1 by 0. And the IP address I have mentioned, the IP will be 192.168.12.1. Subnet must is 255.255.0 and no shutdown. Same interface of first 800 0 by 0. IP address 10.1.0.1 and 255.255.255.0. And no shut. And I'm not configuring the EHLP yet. I just configured the basic IP configuration first, then I will show you how to configure the EHLP. So actually there is two way to configure the EHLP. One is classic, another one is the named config. I will discuss it later. So interface SC one by zero. IP address is 192.168.10.2. 255, 255, 0, no shirt. Interface first Ethernet 0 by 0. IP address will be 10.2.0.2, 255, 255, 0. And no shirt. So if we check the uh, visibility in between R1 and R2 before configuring the EHLP, how can you do that? 2 ping 192.168.12.1. So if, okay, then I think, let's check. Okay, to show IP interface brief. You can see the interface is of serial one by zero. IP address is 10.2, it would be one by zero. IP address 192.168.12.2. Now we can ping each other. So before configuring our uh, the EHRP, I just captured the packet, then I will then explain how actually the packet is going from R1 to R2. So we we'll start packet capture and serial one by zero. And I will filter EHRP packet only. So I have not configured the EHRP yet, so that's why I'm not getting any packet here or uh, this interface, let's configure the EHRP. So as I said, there is a uh, two mode, I mean the two configuration method to configure the EHRP. First one is the classic or traditional, first one is the uh, classic or traditional, another one is dead. So classic as, uh, I think all of you are already known about that, the router EHRP, then the S number, and also the network interface IP and the wildcard mask. And also we, we can uh, define the EHRP router ID, but if we don't mention the EHRP router ID, then it will automatically um, set from his uh, interface. So we'll discuss it later. And another uh, configuration method that is of the named configuration. Named configuration actually use the virtual router to configure the EHRP. Here we can define 
in the address memory. So for the address memory IPv4, we use the address memory IPv4 unit trust and also the autonomous system number. On the capital, we'll need to define that means ASN is the capital. I have to define the S number here. Network interface IP that what is the inter um, which interface I want to enable the EAGRP that need to mention here and also the oil card mask. And same here uh, for enabling the I mean configure the EAGRP router ID. Uh, we have to configure this way in name configuration mode. So I will configure a uh, first router as the classic mode, another one is uh, in name mode. So you can better understand how actually configure. Uh, con uh, we can configure this part. So for enabling a uh, normal EIGLP mode, we have to enable the router EIGLP. Router EIGLP, then the S number like 100 and the network, which network we yeah. so in uh, this section some of our uh, uh, some of us actually define the network so it's actually the wrong what we have to do we just need to define the interface ip address so what is the interface ip address here our interface ip is 192.168.1.1 as i am in router one and the wildcard mask of this interface so in here, I am using only one address, not the whole network. So if we use only one address, that is the interface is IP. So I have to mention the wild mask is quad zero. That's, and also another thing, I also define another network that is being uh, connected to switch one, like this one. So that IP is 10.1.0.1. And also the mask is quad zero because I am configuring only the interface IP, not the network. So that is all about the uh, classic configuration. And if we configure, if we check now on the packet in here, like the virtual packet, if you see, uh, we just enable the EAJP. And here you see the source IP. As I told, the source IP is the router IP 192.168.12.1, and the destination IP is 224.0.0.10, and it's a hello packet. If you see, and every five second, router is sending hello packet to the, the uh, in the interface that I have enabled. EAGRP. If you see the Cisco EAGRP packet, what we'll find here, like the parameters. The KBLO is one, um, K1 is one, K3 is one, other rest of the KBLO is zero. And if we check the router ID is not uh, taken yet, and the auto system number I have configured for EJP that is 100. And the EJP uh, hello packet of course, that means uh, the five is every five seconds he is sending the hello packet. Another thing just need to show here, how we, as you we know EJP uses the IP protocol for sending hello packet. So if you see the IP protocol, the 88 EJP used for sending the EJP packet. That is, that's why the EJP can ensure the reliable or to transmit the packet. Okay. So if you see, we just sending the hello packet in our interface, what is enabled, right? But we are not getting any other hello packet from other sources like one, we are just enabling uh, on 12.1 interface, not getting other hello packet from, uh, uh, from R2, right? So let's configure the router too. So configure uh, to configure the EJLP in name mode in router two, the configuration of the router EJLP name. A name can be anything, it is locally significant. So we can use our uh, name is class. Oops, sorry. Okay. And the address family IPv4 and IPv4 unicast autonomous system will be 100 as we use the autonomous system number 100 in R1. 
then the network same thing network ip is 192.168.12.2 is the interface ip of first uh, serial one by zero and the mask will be the uh, wildcard mask will be the quad zero and also the lan interface ip is 10.2.0.2 and the wildcard mask is quad zero we just enabling two networks that is connected to our R2. Now see how actually packet look like in Wireshark. If you see now, like till this one, if you see the, we are getting, uh, we just have sending hello packet, right? From R1, R1, R1. After that, if you see the, in 141 number, the source, IP that is 1.2 is destination is 192.168.12.2. Now destination is changed because if you check the upper okay, just in it. Okay, let's see the words. Um, what is the update table here? In EAGRP to the auto system number 100. And also the update table from R2, if you see on the 140 sequence number, the update table for carry this, the autonomous system number and the IP protocol and the sequence number. So, uh, to understand uh, this uh, packet, you just need to remember the sequence number, what actually R1 is sending and what R2 is sending against them. So if you see uh, the hello uh, update packet from R1 sources R2 on the sequence number is one, you have to match the uh, I mean the, uh, from the uh, source IP and the R2 also using the same sequence number or not. Because if you see uh, the this packet is actually belongs to the sequence number zero. So we have to need to know the sequence number, uh, we have to find out the sequence number one. So this is the uh, sequence number one. Now, if you see the uh, this also belongs to the autonomous system 100. And if you just close this packet, We see all the allocated now parameters also same. So in this way, actually, when we enable uh, on uh, um, R1 and R2 or any of the router out or AJP enabled interface sending hello packet to the others. Against them, we just seen when R1 is uh, sending the hello packet against R2 also sending the update packet. After that, R1 sending against the acknowledge packet so that is coming from the R1 into the R2 against the update packet, right? And also, R1 is sending, if you see the R1 is sending to hello packet to the R2. Against R, uh, this update, R2 also sending the acknowledgement packet. So, if you check one by one, then you'll find all the things that find um, any packet is sending to the any neighbor is getting also the acknowledge against them. Because we know the EHRP is reliable protocol. Make sense? So in here, we already mentioned how actually see the topology table. Now, if you see the topology table here, show i i p e a g r p topology if now we can see the topology table here like we have all the routes in p that is passive mode also so good so also you can include the all links all links if you have more than um i mean uh, if you just mention the show i p e j p topology table you will find only the successor and physical successor node here and non-physical successor others uh, route 
you cannot see with the EAJ topology, only show IP EAJ topology command. If you want to check all the links, update all the link information in EAJ table, then you have to mention the show IP EAJ topology table, all links. And also, if you want to check the EAJ table, route table on R1, then show IP route EIGRP. If see in R2, what actually R1 learned through the uh, from uh, EAJRP? So, you know, uh, the R2 LAN that is not connected to the R1. So, R1 will learn the LAN network of R2 via EAJRP. So, if you check the uh, LAN no network of R2 that is 10.2.0 slash 24 and that is coming via 192.168.12.2 that is the next address of R2. And if you see the uh, just behind of this network that is if you see the D, a D means which a D means it's coming by EAJRP. So why uh, uh, if you see the uh, other route plug like uh, uses R, OSP uses O, EGP is B, why not uh, if uh, why is uh, not using the D? Because uh, as you know, EGP also uh, there is another routing protocol was EGP. So EGP taken already the E, then EJLP coming to the picture. Then D means a D used for the EJLP and D means dual. Because you know that EJLP used the diffusion update algorithm for calculating the base path to the destination. Now, if we see show IP EAJRP interface brief, see which uh, interface we can see which interface EAJRP is enabled. If you see, we have enabled uh, on two interfaces that is serial one by zero and serial uh, first Ethernet zero by zero. And to check the all other things, we can use show IP protocol. Then we can find other information. Like we have enabled the EJRP routing table in R1. The IS number is 100, and the metric is OIT. I mean, the metric enabled for calculating the base path is K1 and K3. And the router ID is 192.168.12.2. And we haven't configured the router ID on the EHF. Why is taken 192.168.12.1 as a router ID? That's the question, right? So if we don't configure, we can configure the router ID manually or it taking the router ID is the highest IP address from is interface which is up that means if you configure the loopback interface on router you always take in the loopback ip address uh use the um he always use the uh, loopback address as a router id if we don't uh, configure uh, the loopback address in our router then he will take in which ip address is the highest ip address if you see in our uh IP information of the router. See the first Ethernet IP address is 10.1.0.1, and another one is 192.168.12. So which one is the highest IP address? The highest IP address is 192.168.12.1. So it will always take in the highest IP address, and it should need to be up always. If like another IP address that is higher than that, and the IP address in shutdown mode, then EJ will not take in. Uh, that IP address for uh, is a router ID. As you know, uh, the EJRP used the in, uh, list, uh, administrative distance 90 for his internal and for the external route, he is the 170. And by default, in maximum path invention, maximum four path, he will load balance. 
there is some of uh, there is another question why when will is the uh, load balance and how actually it calculate so if on the metric like uh, on the path better cost is same then eajlp will use the load balance like uh, okay say this is r1 and r2 and r3 r4 r5 and r6 here is another one. for r1 to like uh, this is r6 or seven this r2 r3 r4 r5 and r6 so when all the cost to reach, uh, reach the r7 from r1 is same that means this cost i mean uh, this cost this path cost this path path cost this were all are the same cost that that is like uh, all uh, this cost is 10 this cost is 10 this 10 this 10 this 10 then eagrp will do the load balance to sending the uh, pack eagrp packet from r1 to r7 when the cost will be the same by default eagrp use four path that means by default if you see the maximum path four that means Four path will be on the if other more I mean five path will be in the picture, but he will not uh, use the five path for this uh, load balance. It is on the four path, but we can change this below. And also we know EIJP do the unequal load balance. If cost is different, EJP can do the load balance also. For that reason, we can use the variance in interface mode so i'm not going that part right now but we'll discuss it later so in here if you see here like uh, routing which routing is uh, this is uh, i mean the 10.1.0 routing of uh, routing for this router and another is 12.1 actually these uh, two interface we are enable the eajrp and if you see the routing information last update we are getting from the neighbor that is seven minutes seven seconds and the distance between r1 and r2 that is uh, uh, it's internal that's why it's used 90. so all this information will found in show ip protocol command if we enable uh, the uh, we change the k value which uh, uh eajrp autonomous system we used what uh, interface we enable the network all the information will on in here so now how actually we can configure the router id see like if we use the like uh, if we configure the uh, loopback zero and the ip address is like 1.1.1 1 .1 1 .1, and the subnet was like 255 255 okay zero no shut so is uh, when we configure the loopback interface on the router it's supposed to be on the shwip protocol right but if you see the router id is not changed here because when once it's uh, uh, getting uh, taken the router id until uh, this address is got down or uh, the EHP process is uh, clear so router id would or router id would not be changed so for updating the router id we have to clear the eajrp so we have to eajrp uh, sorry ip eajrp then autonomous system number like 100 neighbors 
So okay. So we, then, uh, we have to configure this one because uh, this is not the highest IP address. So we have to configure the EAJRP side, router EAJRP, 100, then the router ID. So uh, that command will be the EAGR router ID that is 1.1.1. Okay, so in this way we can configure the router ID on our uh, uh, classic mode. If you want to configure uh, the uh, router ID on the name mode, then we have to go same way like uh, router EAGR plus then address family ipv4 unitast autonomous system 100 then same things we have to configure the ejp router id uh, okay i am configuring two and after that i will configure the loop back zero ip address is Two dot two dot two dot two and also the okay. So if we check the show IP protocol right now, now so we'll found the router ID is two dot two dot two and also in R one if we check the router ID so do show ip protocol will found the router id is one so in this way we can configure the router id so uh, two way we can configure that one is manual another one is dynamically taken from the uh, interface ip that is uh, highest ip of the interface and uh, and it should need to up the interface ip always so otherwise it will not take in the if uh, the IP address is least, uh, highest. So let's coming to our configuration uh, slide. So uh, in this way, you can configure the basic configuration of the EAJRP. So uh, this way you can configure the router. We already configured that part. And what is the passive interface? As uh, actually um, we have configured all uh, interface, right? When we enable the interface uh, on EAGRP, then he will actually forward the hello packet all the interface. But if you see uh, the router is connected to switch, is there any uh, needed to send the hello packet or uh, uh, into the switch one? No. Because we don't need, uh, uh, we don't have any other router that would uh, establish ad adjacency with R1. So we just need to enable the network on EAJRP, but we don't need to send uh, the hello packet, this interface like so, uh, fast Ethernet 0 by 0 and fast Ethernet 0 by 0. So in this, uh, in this case, we have to configure the interface as a pass passive interface so that EAJRP would not send hello packet towards this interface. So that means when EAJRP uh, established, he will enable 
the first Ethernet 0i in uh, IP address on EJP table, but he would not send the hello packet towards the first Ethernet 0i1. So it will prevent the EJP from the agency on that interface. How actually we can configure that part? So to configure this one, actually, just in a uh, uh, same thing, we can configure the uh, passive interface in 2 a like a classic in classic configuration. If you check here, like uh, EAJLP 100 under the 100, we can configure passive interface like in here. You uh, you have to configure the first Ethernet 0 y 0. That means EAJLP would not send hello packet in first Ethernet 0 y 0. And also, if you check here under the EF interface is 0 by 2 I mean the first reason 0 by 2 you have to configure the passive interface so uh, the command is slightly different from the classic so here here you have to go into the interface first then you have to configure the passive interface but in classic you're just mentioning which interface will be the passive so if we check the command in configuration mode I mean the router one classic mode like router EAJRP 100 passive interface which one first Ethernet 0 by 0 that's it but in name mode what we have to do we have to go under the AF interface like router EAJRP plus address primary IPv4 unicast autonomous system 100 then EF interface which interface we want to go that is first Ethernet 0 by 0 and what we do we want to disable the hello packet that is passive interface that's it so if you see there is two comma and we need to con uh, we have to configure on the name mode first we have to go under the EF interface mode the interface is first Ethernet zero then we are configuring the passing interface but thing if you have more than 100 interface that need to be configured as a passive interface then you have to the on this one by one right so that would not be the always of for us so what we can do we can do we can configure passive interface d4 that means all the interface configured as a passive interface that means we are not sending any hello packet any of the interface after that we can just enabling the interface that is no passive interface first ethernet 0 by 0 that means we want to send the hello packet first ethernet 0 so no passive interface so same thing in here we are we can configure all the interface as a passive interface under the default all the interface is a passive that means all we are disabling all um, hello packet all the uh, interfaces then under the interface we have, uh, will configure uh, we are configured the no passive interface make sense guys so uh, this way we can configure the passive interface on EAJRP. Another thing we also check uh, the agency for the neighbor uh, authentication, right? So in auth uh, for authentication, uh, we have to configure the key chain. Like uh, if we, it's a not mandatory uh, field to use for uh, configuring the EAJP, but if we want to secure the EAJP neighborship, then we have to configure the EAJP authentication in between the routers. So uh, I just uh, explaining, I will not configure this one because the time is, is short. So how we can configure the EAJP authentication here? We have, we can configure that first we have to configure the keychain that means the keychain we just naming is the EJP key 
and the key number well, what uh, is uh, just a number we can use any number here and key string what is, will be the password if this is the password we are using that is the cisco and classic code we have to configure the authentication or we have to configure the keychain under the interface so first we have to enable that but for for enabling the authentication in EIJT, we have to enable uh, um, phase first command IP authentication mode EIJT hundred and MD five. So MD five message digest five we are enabling on that interest. That means we are uh, going to configure the authentication. After that, which up is string key string will use for the authentication? IP authentication keychain that we have configured EAJRP for EAJRP 100 and the name is the same as we configured here. So in this way we can configure the EAJRP keychain or we can configure the EAJRP authentication but you have to remember that uh, for the EAJRP classic mode you need to configure under the interface not the EAJRP configuration mode. And also in uh, EAJRP, uh, we can configure the EAJRP page in uh, name mode also, like this way. Or uh, EAJRP named and uh, that this family uh, interface, we can configure that part. Keychain. Same thing. So, uh, how uh, much time we have? I know. No, we, we need to finish already 5.37. I know that. That's why. Uh, okay. okay. I think we can start tomorrow earlier. I think uh, tomorrow we can start by uh, 3 p.m. I can do that. Uh, because Asur prayer, someone uh, I said about the Asur prayer, they are late. So, yes. Okay. So, I think our uh, two more slides. Uh, actually, this slide is will take more time because we have to calculate all the. Uh, I mean, I already discussed that part, but uh, in this slide, uh, I have to show how actually a metric will look like in the router. So in that part, it will take uh, take uh, another ten to fifteen minutes. If you allow, then I, I can do that. Otherwise, we can wrap up can uh, do it uh, tomorrow uh i can't do that because uh, tomorrow will um another session the right so okay. the uh, the time is so short just also. briefly can you so, explain this one so if they have pushed so it, i already so i already you, explained i already explained the load balancing part authentication part uh, i also explained uh, the metric calculation bit in earlier in i mean the very first time so is in here just we can i can say uh, we are using the metric on the metric like i said uh, k1 and k3 is enabled if you see on the right side uh, is the formula ejp used to calculating the metric and by default metric one and three is enabled. that means if you see on the second i mean here uh, that is one and one enabled other rest not is participating in the calculating the EAJRP metric, right? So we are using only two. One is bandwidth, another one is delay. So the uh, for calculating the metric, so here is the formula 256 and 10 to the standby minimum bandwidth. Minimum bandwidth is the interface bandwidth for where uh, our um, which one is actually the lowest interface bandwidth if with the advertised distance. Uh, inter interface bandwidth others will be the higher than that then we will use the uh, we will use our local interface bandwidth so which one is the lowest bandwidth will is for calculating the bandwidth here and the total delay how actually we can uh, go destination what will be the test by default for the serial interface uh, to earn 2000 uh, microsecond is the delay uh, for the fast 800 is the 100 microsecond so based on the interface we have to consider the so first here we are using the first ethernet so delay will be the 100 right and the minimum bandwidth will be the 1544 
So if we just put into that our delo in our formula, we can or we'll find the metric in EAJRP. That's the thing. In short, in short, what I can describe here. So thank you guys. Thanks for joining today. I am wrapping up for uh, today. If you have any question, uh, you can raise your hand or then I will open the mic for you guys. Uh, okay, thank you very much uh, for your fruitful uh, presentation and also uh, details about the EITRP. So, seen or any you can study this one today and tomorrow with our same instructor he will uh, present another topics ospf so you can also ask tomorrow so faisal can you hear me i think you can uh, share the assessment link now uh Nuzul, Nuzul, i think you, you can leave now i think uh, we hope we'll meet you tomorrow okay thank you sir thank you guys okay, thank you very much.